all the cheese but for our um, it's our delay uh, <laughs> call the meeting to order and we are we are being recorded contemporaneously hello camera <laughs> begin as, as we always do with a, a period for public comment and um, so um, any of our uh, uh, visitors so who would you please uh, introduce yourselves and, and have your say and uh, oh. I want to acknowledge that uh, Doug is going to be is going to be working with us here at the commission which we appreciate uh, uh, very much Yes. And I have a briefcase full of papers. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> Some of which I will yes. transfer to you. So, do you want me to say anything? Or? Why don't you just introduce yourself? So, so a few of us have had the I had the pleasure of meeting with you and Linda, but uh, to others, and and we will in turn later in the meeting be introducing ourselves. Okay. Great. Linda is the matchmaker, and she has matched me with the Disability uh, Commission uh, to do some work on a report uh, coming out of the commission. And uh, so I'm going to be looking at a lot of material and then putting it together under Chris's guidance uh, into a report. That's, that's my understanding. And I'm in the tax abatement program, which means if you give me 91 hours or so of work to do, uh, then I get a thousand dollars off my real estate taxes, which means I can pay for a small vacation. So uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful program. Uh, so it's nice to be with you, and I'll get to know you as we as we move along. And Chris and I will be in Friday and start deciding for you. this. We're we're confident we will have that ninety hours, but and more. And the the report will be the self evaluation transition plan update and recommendations. Yes, and our, our other visitor today is our our, uh, our good friend and, and neighbor. You want to say hi? Um, hi, guys. Hi. Um, I just want you all to know that uh, the House of Representatives has passed House Bill 620, which is a reform of the ADA Act. and. There are some tweaks that may cause some issues. We'll find out about the months down the line. But if people should just be aware of HR 620, I did not get the uh, vote tally. Um, and it has not been signed into law yet that I know of. Yeah. There are some tweaks that we may need to pay attention to. Uh, I'll cut to the chase. The, uh, there may be some considerable delays. If someone has a complaint, there's uh, a bunch of loophole processes um, that will slow down one's right to petition for payment. Take a look at it when you get the chance, and thank you for letting me participate. Yeah, thanks for, for bringing a, a copy, Ken. It's something we, I've been certainly watching. It's been growing for several years. It's a significant weakening of Title III of the ADA in Massachusetts um, because we have access to our uh, Architectural Access Board for, for complaints. Um, that is not going to be weakened, but it will weaken the uh, obligation to provide um, readily achievable barrier removal for places to provide good services and activities open to the public. And we could, at the next meeting, put it on the agenda, and I'll give more of an explanation. It's a serious negative. The vote was uh, overwhelmingly um, uh, you know, pushed by the Republican side of the House, 
The problem that arose is actually a problem, are problems under California law and Florida law that allowed people to very frivolously institute lawsuits. Uh, but we can uh, discuss that more at the next meeting. But it is very worthwhile uh, uh, looking it up and, and acquainting yourself with the background on it. Thank you. So um, let um, us, as members of the commission, introduce ourselves. I'm uh, Chris Palamas, uh, wielder of the gavel, <laughs> at the insistence of my, my beloved, the uh, uh, this year's chair of the commission. That's true. Linda Desmond, the ADA coordinator. Judy Kimberly, secretary. City Councilor Mary Ann LaBarge. Letitia Ward, a member. Jim Winston, member. Oh. Emma Cornwall, pending member. Hannah oh. Coyle, member. Bruce McGrath, administrative assistant, City of Northampton. Very good. Um, our first order of business is the approval of the February 20th, 2017 uh, minutes. They, they were uh, just distributed, um, was it today or, or yesterday? Is there a, 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 a motion to approve the, the minutes? Motion to approve. Second it. No. Any, um, any comment, any concerns? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? No, it passes unanimously. Um, the, the next is I'll, I'll ask uh, uh, Marianne to give us an, an, an update on that. Is this the council's process now? Yes. And I believe interviewing our, our pending member. I've talked with them already. Um, Jim Winston is I had notified the mayor's office and talked with them in regards to applications of this commission and not just other boards too. And apparently I got the date of when she applied to get on the commission of disabilities and it was like June or July ahead of it. And then they notified her to tell her there was no openings. <sighs> then, again in November, there was a change in staffing in the mayor's office. So, then they got back to you again. Correct? I don't think I actually ever heard of the mayor. Anyways, I got it straightened out. Her application came into City Council last Thursday. We referred it out to our Committee on City Services. I'm interviewing her along with some other people. And hopefully, that will happen on April 2nd that we'll be interviewing several people on City Services. Hopefully, after a full recommendation from our committee, Hopefully, okay. it will go to City Council April 5th on a Thursday. If not, then definitely April 19th. Then I told her the procedures of it. Once it's approved by full City Council, she will receive a letter from our Council Clerk in reference to that she's been approved by City Council and then she has to go to the city clerk to be sworn in. Mm -hmm. So we got one moving. My God, <laughs> do we see glimmering in the distance the end of another long and winding having I mean, done? We did it, Craig. Yeah, we did yeah. It. You know, with, uh, I suppose on behalf of the city, we can once again express our apologies for the for the for the long delay. But the timing is actually good. The spring is here, is. and, and yes. we know that um, amongst the business of the spring is going to get back to um, addressing the very deteriorated pedestrian environment, which was one of your. Yeah. So we we will get there. To have those on the commission is awesome. Okay. 
Uh, that's actually kind of a segue. You know, the spring approaches and um, our, our next item for business is the self-evaluation transition plan update. And that is uh, um, what we've uh, talked to, to Doug about uh, joining us. And I have a, a bunch of stuff in here, which includes the um, uh, original self-evaluation that was uh, put together, which is a very pretty brief document, um, shortly after the passage of the ADA, and an update, which was, I think, 1995, at any rate, it's, it's dated. Um, we have the uh, copy of the, uh, um, the second grant, at least, that uh, the Office of Planning and Sustainability submitted, which was awarded 250 k um, And we also have the report of our, on our consultants, um, where we did the initial surveying both of some of the policies and procedures carried out by Melissa Marshall, and the surveying of um, municipal buildings, and some of the initial surveying of the pedestrian environment that we that we did uh, uh, last fall. So we're going to take this mass of paper, we're going to scatter it, and then figure out how to bring uh, bring some order to it. I think the thing to specify here is this is an is an update. Of, we, we cannot get to a final product because we're going to continue to be, work on these issues. But we will get an articulation of it at this point. What has been revised, what we're recommending for revision, um, some of the issues that, that will be carried on longer, um, specifically um, the concern about long-term uh, restructuring and funding for the um, ADA coordinator um, for, the, for the city. So it is my great relief to uh, have some support, and I do thank uh, Thank Linda for being our, our matchmaker. Matchmaker. Yeah. And we're going to carve you when we get this done. We're going to actually carve you a whole set of this. In That's true. Or something. Yes. And, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and engrave it for you. So it's going to take some time to do this, but um, um, we're going to try to you know, glean these down, and it will all be presented here um, to the commission. Um, as we assemble these pieces and before we submit this finally as a set of recommendations to the mayor and to the council um, we really should uh, I'll call a, um, a public a public hearing uh, yeah. opportunity for for a comment um, we'll hold the timing on that until we've made enough progress that we can that we can see the end on it I sent an email to both you and Judith on the link to the consultant's report on the sidewalks. Did you get it? Yes, did get the link. Have not had a chance to. Okay. To look Why at did I know you got Will you it? just quickly explain the consultant again? We've had a consultancy to the city, as I understand it, which has in a uh, generated with some kind of technology. Um, I, I look at all of the the, the walkways in the, in the city, or most of the walkways all, in the city, I and all the places all where the drives or curves. <coughs> what we don't know as yet is to what extent that, that report um, addressed um, accessibility concerns in a I way. Open it up and read it, because there's a lot involved in that. Yeah, I expect my eyes will go buggy looking yes. at that on a computer screen. So. And I have to say my council clerk was correct. She had difficulties finding it on the website. And it's becoming a problem for a lot of people. Do you know offhand how many pages the report is? I haven't even opened it. We will take a look and, and uh, at, the, uh, at our next meeting we should actually have at least some kind of a assessment what the quality of information is. We also had an email from <coughs> Wayne um, some weeks ago, and I have to say I've been remiss. I wanted to uh, thank him for it, but he mentioned that under certain circumstances, 
um, the uh, funding on certain walkways can potentially be included under some of the state funding. Yes. It's those that, that really have to do with state routes. And he was asking whether uh, we had identified um, curb cuts, but they were principally outside of the area that we surveyed. We cannot do a survey of the entire city. What we, we began looking at was the principal, you know, downtown and um, and some other areas that had been specifically reported to us as, as I hazardous. I think one of them was off of Ryan Road, which is a curb cut that leads you to nowhere. And never there are a bunch of those. When some work is being done, a, a curb cut will be put in. If there's not, you know, walkways continuing, very often you have a, a curb cut that goes to a, a view of the lower part of the curb cut. Well, but this is nothing. This goes actually onto somebody's lawn. Uh-huh. <laughs> Been there for years. I, oh, I can... We're going to talk later uh, when the, we get to the mayor's capital report. I have to appreciate the, the mayor on, on one point in his presentation, well, several points in his presentation. So that's it. Any, any questions? We're going to proceed on this updating. We're also probably you know, going to be doing some additional um, look at, at some of the problem areas. I think for our report, we've got to key in on representative um, uh, problem areas and, and our key recommendations um, and uh, it would just be beyond our scope to do a complete one. Another quick question. Yes. Uh, Paul Griffin has asked to um, if there's anywhere we could use his skills. Oh, absolutely. He's ready and willing and absolutely. I'll give him a call back. Yeah, so. you know, Paul is a very talented photographer. And so as we identify some of our priority areas where we have photographs and some of them we can, some of them <coughs> may be very good, but we can get Paul to do some really good photography on some of the key points, but also some of the positive points. We're not just going to reflect the negative because there has been significant progress in the, in the city over the years and we want to reflect some of that. The most outstanding example, of course, is Pulaski Park, mm -hmm. um, where there are a couple of details still to be attended to, uh, but on the whole has been a, a, a very successful, and, and what we're arguing, what we sought funding for, was to continue right from the edge of where the Pulaski renovated walk was, um, <coughs> and as they approach City Hall. Any other questions on that? I'll have you get it Oh, yes. Tell okay. Paul to come on over. And okay. We almost have a team, and Claudia said she didn't really want us to leave her out, too. So I'm thinking if we get Doug and Paul and Claudia together, you know, to start working together as a team, they're all incredibly capable, strong professionals. Yeah. Be excited. I mean, the results should be pretty significant. Absolutely. And you could, we could just, well, not we. I'm sorry. Nine days. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that was sort of a slip here, but we well, all, this, still, this group could be their cheerleader, you know, right, basically do a lot of the, the work that we that needs to be done. That mm -hmm. is like sort of because of our structure is kind of impossible. Well, you know, we are going to declare you <coughs> emeritus. We're going to give you, a, to give you a, a, a scepter so that any time that you want to return and say, get about the people's business. Uh, that's that's nice um, who, who's going to take her place while she's gone? No idea. Um, hopefully by Friday we might have a res the result in. Um, all of the uh, all of the interviews by the mayor will be done on Friday. I've, I've, I've been amazed it's proceeded really very effectively. Yeah, so maybe I, I would so. actually have someone to actually physically hand over the, the gavel to, so to speak. That, that means that we as a commission will also be holding a, a non-denominational -denom circuit of prayer meetings. <laughs> That's true. As we have to... Uh, um, 
go through this transition. But that's what I was, what I was going to say to Wayne. Did we sing Kumbaya? Did we sing Kumbaya? I'm a Kumbaya kind of woman. Definitely, you could sing that. And you have a, had the date. You've had too many, you said, retirement parties, but you have to endure. I have one more. Yeah, it's um, on Monday. You're all welcome. Oh. Um, it's on the 26th, Monday the 26th from 4 to 6. And after the more formal, we'll get informal over to the World War II Club. Oh. And the person who's, um, who's, who's the manager said she would have balloons. Okay. Oh, so, uh, life is perfect. Um, what kind of present do you want? I want to get you something. What, and what are we going to no. do over there? No. Tell her you want a new car. A new car, yeah. Car. <laughs> Just come, that's all. <laughs> Alright, so after six o'clock we're going over to the World War II Club. Yeah. I gotta ask Bob. Does Bob tell him I know that? Or is here. He could come. That's her uncle. Oh, all right, Jen's uncle. Jen is the anyway, whatever. My brother in law. Um, you know, I'm I, I'm not quite sure, you know, I know that people are supposed to call their RSVPs. And I haven't really been telling them that, so I have no idea how many people will come. But the, my, they can my, get enough in there. Of course, of yeah. course. Well, here is the, the more official one, but everyone's still invited to. I'll tell you. Oh, sure. Anybody. I'll tell my friend. I'll, I'll tell people who are I'll write my, my mother. Well, my mother. Mother. I would yeah. like to say her mom. Sure. We'll definitely put a crazy glass to you. Yeah, we'll just really tempo glass for you, too. And the last time I retired in Ireland, and I won't even share the experiences there. So. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, I have never, yeah. I, I've never attended um, any function in Ireland, whether it was a conference, seminar, or meeting, that there was not alcohol. <laughs> so what can I say? What was yeah. there singing? Oh my God! I was there singing. Oh I, I when when I see an activity here, I just like St. Patrick's Day party that we had here. I, I think everybody just so placidly sits there, and I, I just remember the last oh St. Patrick's party. The older people are like grabbing the microphone away from me and start singing, and there it was. But yeah. you know, dancing, and you know, even the wheel people in wheelchairs were dancing. You know, it was it's Even? really Even? they were really? Yeah. yeah, but they weren't nobody was dancing here. Even people that could easily dance. Yeah. So is that what, your so well I look forward to dance with me. I look forward certainly. All right. There you tell, have, tell people well, don't be too close behind. Okay. You, might, yeah. you, might, you might hear the screams. Okay. That's true. So, so Monday the 26th? Yes. yes. Four to six. And after that, World War II Club. World War II Club. And then at noon, we're at the Rotary Club. That same morning, the same day. Yeah. But right. I was you reminded that? me that when you called me today. Uh -huh. Can I go with you guys for that in the morning? So, our next item of business, and here we're into the thicket. Um, assistive listening and sound amplification assessment. So as we're moving forward with this continual updating of the self-evaluation, it's you know pretty obvious that one of the, the most general uh, deficiencies that we have across the city is in quality sound amplification and assistive listening. We have, um, we've got microphones here. This is not amplified sound, this is this is only recorded. In council chambers, we have recording of, of sound and uh, video. Uh, we do not have amplification. We have a sign which indicates assistive listening system, but nobody really seems to know uh, where it is or how to operate it, so far as we can tell. And then when we go out to all of the other public meetings that in some way come under the purview of the city, they might be taking place at one of the schools or they might be taking, um, taking place in, in any number of the public spaces. Um, there should be, of course, an option for anyone who has limited hearing, okay? I, who have lost my hearing aids and realized that I have to spend the money to, to get another pair. Um, but, you know, this sound dimension is a very important part of the ADA. I think that uh, the way, 
while we've looked at some in terms of our survey process, we know some of the basic dimensions of the deficiency. To really do the next level of assessment and start to figure out what sort of uh, solutions ought to be done, um, we really need to work with someone who's got a sound engineering background. That usually are our musicians. So some people who ought to be, you know, um, raising their voices at the pub. Um, that's where this understanding, at least, of amplification very often is a, is a common skill. And then there's a question beyond that, so much more technical, of which form of assistive listening system. And it may ultimately be that several are needed because certain kinds of systems are actually wired in and long-term, uh, but the city very definitely needs a capacity for a loaner system or systems for all of the public meetings. And then it should be a requirement that any group that's operating and using the public space for a meeting should have an, that assistive listening available for their meeting. Those are the dimensions of it. So I will would like to come up with a, a more specific proposal um, of how we secure potentially using some of our account as seed money to get an actual um, analysis of, of some of these issues. Sound amplification and assistive listening. And um, what I would um, like, I don't know if we need a, a, a motion on this, but at least a, and I suppose the chair will entertain a motion um, that an assessment will be made of the um, services that would be needed um, to assist us in our assessment of the needs for assistive living and um, assistive listening and amplification. So move. No. I would like an explanation on that. When you're saying to use some of our seed money, <clears throat> how do you know what the cost is? Who are you going to be That's the, the assessment that we have to make. We do not know what the amount is now. And who are you going to use? Have you decided yet? We do not know as yet. There are, um, there are, First of all, the Commission for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing in the state has a lot of basic information about the assistive listening systems. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't have a capacity to come out and give us on-site um, assistance on that. The places in the state that have responsibility for this are the Commission for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing mm -hmm. and the Massachusetts Office on Disability, the people who have, have funded us. So um, I just want to have your authorization to make these inquiries. Okay. They would then come that language back okay. to the Commission with a more specific proposal. I didn't want to just go running around and with no, no prospect. We would consider using a reasonable, modest amount of our seed money if we make a collective determination that uh, we're going to get back to the buck. Plus the fact is, there is no reason why that our city doesn't step in and pay for some of it. Oh, the, the payment for systems definitely is the responsibility of the of the city. I know there's that. no proposal that this commission would pay for it. I think our job is we're doing this uh, update of the of the self evaluation and transition plan. So so that's where it might be useful to spend um, a modest amount and we'll examine what so we can um, go to the city with a more complete and thorough statement of what the city needs to do. Right, plus the fact I think that we should have a meeting with the mayor on it too once you find out your information. Once we have it, yeah. yes. I agree to that. Now Ruth so. mentioned something to me about how she's been working with somebody, Jeff, Jeff with closed caption and Boston apparently, she told me, 
Classic, correct? Yeah, Boston. The Boston um, uh, Disability something. I, I it's gone out of my head. But anyway, um, if you look where our meetings are posted or are supposed to be posted, there's a closed caption. They're the only ones. So I've gone to Jeff in Boston to see if he can get me point of contact. Their secretary at the group didn't know. And he is who have you gone to, if you would identify for he that? He is Jeff. Dugan. Jeff uh, Dugan. Yeah, yeah. Dugan. Yeah. Mass Dugan. Office on Disability, as yeah. I said. Yeah. Yes. That was one. I have a list of things to do in the business, and that was one of them. Yep. Um, if they can be closed captioned and theirs is very well posted on YouTube, then we can be as well. So that is extremely I, valuable. I've been following up on that. The problem with YouTube is the transcription um, is. The transcription is horrendous. It's gotten a lot it's in, better. And it's inaccurate. It was in the beginning. It has gotten some better, a lot more. Well, I would say a lot better than it used to be. It's better than it used to be, but voice recognition, when you get into any technical language, I'm not saying we shouldn't do it, but it's not a solution. Oh, really? Oh, it is know. not a solution. We dealt with this with the state. Yeah. We were told that in this new world we could tell higher education to do that voice transcription. Um, just take a look at YouTubes about matters of interest to you and look at when they get into any language that sounds phonically like something that yeah. is colloquial. It if will you, it will go to the colloquial, it will not pick up If language. you want to see it on the bottom of everybody's minutes is a link. That link is just to the Disability Commission page, and then you have to search for ours, and right on the screen it comes up, there's two or three of them that are already captured. Because she sent me the link, and I got onto it, and it Wait, actually could I, could I ask, we have, our media center has informed us that they are working on moving towards captioning of council and the school committee. I don't see that this gives us anything more than that. The closed caption has been being worked on, Chris, for quite a while with us. We had huge meetings over that. Yeah. So we're moving up on it. It's going to happen. Right. This would be our meeting. Right now that's what I'm looking at. Our meeting where it's supposed to caption. That's for this commission. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's just what they're about. I don't know the, the problems, the, the, the costs to move beyond a YouTube captioning, mm -hmm. there are services now and they range from about a dollar a minute to two dollars and eighty seven cents a minute. Wow. You can also buy your own software programs, but let me tell you, I've tried them, it's darn near impossible because you have to type as fast as somebody talks yeah. and unless you have a super typist. <laughs> I don't know nothing about it. Chris is the expert on this that, stuff. Yeah, that's. I, I can't answer all yeah, of this. That's the that's the difficulty. We're we're looking for these services to be at a sustainable at a sustainable cost. If we have sixty minute meetings, um, you know our budget goes pretty quickly if we're spending a uh, um, hundred and forty dollars a um, hundred and forty dollars a month. There is an option on YouTube to do free captioning, but I haven't had a lot of luck with it yet. So it's it's very poor quality. I think it's it's one thing we can certainly you know ask at some point. It couldn't hurt to find out. That's what I figured. Yeah. You know. I know I'm not a member, and I'm not um, supposed to. I will to say again that. though, we have the communications accessibility coordinator for the five colleges. He works here part-time with Smith College in Northampton. He is the most knowledgeable person in the Valley. Please, if you're going to talk to someone, talk to Rob. He's the guy who knows the business. He knows it better than MOD. He knows it better than the Division of Capital Asset Management and Maintenance. They gave me and analytical systems that they were developing in Boston for the state's ADA stuff, it was nonsense. The man who made sense of it is here in our community. 
nobody in the state that I know of, someone, if they've made an investment, they may do it, do it better. Uh, but, you know, work with the local knowledgeable people. And Chris, schedule some time with them and, and meet with them. Have you ever worked with the person that she's talking about? I don't Jeff, know he was the guy who was at our meeting on the other He's side of the valley. Oh, These yeah. are the people who have funded us. Yes. This is why did we get one quarter of the available money in the state? No, no, my Does question, that sound like it's a highly competitive field? Was, I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about. Did you know about that going on in Boston where they had the closed caption? I didn't know that. Well, I, I, I don't know what they got got in Boston. Have they got an accurate closed captioning system? The ones that I look at looks pretty good. What it yeah. does is it comes up and it tells you if it says text in a voice not intelligible or text intelligible, I forget the exact word, but it tells you it can't understand it rather than try and guess, yeah. which is what it used to do. Hmm. It looked pretty good. And That's true. I think Rodney would have been happy with that. Mm -hmm. I used to go to close captioning on my TV and stuff, and I've noticed a huge improvement in that, too. Yeah. Just as technology yep. improves, I think. It, the technology is improving. Uh, we met the director of the meet with the media center, did we not? Mm -hmm. We asked about the state of captioning of the director of our media center. I know. And I know we were told that's going that, on. We've been working on it for well, how many years? Five years. This is technically above our grade level. This is why we we need to, at some points, potentially invest some small amounts of our seed money, but not until we know what we're investing. In. Can, I know I'm as a non-member. I'm not supposed to speak up. But yeah, and I would like to get on. So let's this speak. Is on the same thing. Let's speak outside the. Let's speak outside the. Meeting. We've got 15 minutes, and we have lots of other stuff, to, lots of other stuff to discuss. I'm not be out of here. What I asked for was a motion that simply I'm going to work up a proposal for how we spend our. Not a motion. And you made a motion. Okay. I second it. Too. Somebody second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm sorry. I can't hear I'm a, with two people talking at the same. time. Yeah, what we need to do, and what we need to do is talk outside the meeting when we're doing this kind of an analysis. This is this is not the stuff. We've got to come to this council with information digested so that we can that we can present it because we can go off on 17 different lines on any technical analysis like this. Right. Because the next one and you know, our next issue is we have issues around police department, the lack of response to block pedestrian ways. Um, we then have to go on to and talk about some of the issues that were raised in the mayor's capital plan, um, which also opens up the question, some other questions related to the police. What we have realized, particularly over this past month, um, questions not only about blocked sidewalks, concerns that have been raised in the past about the lack of security in public housing uh, here in the city. There are a whole series of issues that are, I think, are really, really very, very pressing. <coughs> but Mary Ann, on blocked sidewalks, I where are we? <coughs> um, Chris and Jude knew about a problem that had arisen with Phil Sullivan, who did come in here to speak and invited us to the road room and so forth, which we will be going next Monday. Um, of the convenience store on King Street next to the Hotel North Dampton, of trucks parking right on the sidewalks. I don't have that picture. Do you have that first picture, Chris? I don't have it with me, but I've seen it. I yeah, know. right. A huge, this, huge truck, completely, and it was like a, I mean, it was a 10 ton or more yes. truck. Anyway, it is to the point of becoming a very dangerous situation. 
I then, once I saw that picture that being at Phil's house and having a meeting with him, I couldn't believe what I saw. I wrote to Chief Jody Casper on the 12th of March. Good morning, and this is the very reply back I got from her of my great concerns of it being a very dangerous situation for all who use that sidewalk. Good morning, thanks for sending along your concerns about both the block sidewalk and the parking spot in front of Bird Store. I have an officer going over to the King Street convenience store with the picture so that they understand the problem will make them aware of the complaints and the risk it poses to people who are forced into the road as a result of the blocked sidewalk. Ideally, someone would call us when the truck is parked there so that we could have an officer respond and talk with the driver. Regarding Bird Store, I can let our officer know so that they can keep an extra eye out for this behavior. We also make sure to get in touch with Phil Sullivan. I hope you have a good weekend. That's Joni. Anyways, the situation at Bird's store in Florence, and I actually went up and I watched, and it happened again. It's a handicapped accessible area that we have placed, what was it, Ruth, a couple of years ago? It was about at least two, three. About that, and they painted even the area of showing handicap parking on the road in a head sign. And I know many business owners there, and I was in there talking to them, and they said, Council, go up and take a look at the sign. I look. If you're out in the road coming in, you can't see the sign. They had it turned, and the visibility was not there. So I got a hold of Richard Pasoletti immediately and went up and they fixed it and turned it. Well, that's fine. That's cool. That's done. We have a problem. People are going into birds, still parking. Ignorance prevails. Parking in a handicapped parking area. Get out of their trucks, get out of their cars. I saw it again Friday. Run in and get their scratch tickets and go right into the cars or the trucks. So, I can't answer to what is happening. Are they citing anybody? And I'm going to ask for an update on that. Now, today, at 10 o'clock this morning, and I just showed it to Attorney Winston, Phil Sullivan drove by, and this truck parked on the sidewalk going into the convenience store and bringing in goods. I'm going to pass it around 10 o'clock this yeah. morning. Yeah. 10 o'clock this morning. Yeah, but some of them have not seen it. And he called the police. He also saw a cruiser come down, <coughs> didn't stop. Also a meter maid across the street where Old Friendly's was, never came across the street. So we have a problem. I immediately emailed her today to tell her that something had to be done immediately. Immediately, before some tragedy happens and we lose somebody's life innocently. It's very serious down there. Yes, it is. And, and I... What? The day that you and I were down in Florence so we had to chase down the meter maid to go back and write a ticket for somebody parked in that spot? You and I did that. that could, was, could we just not get into, let's focus on the issue, what's the action to be taken? We still have agenda items to work on. Um, so we have a particular spot, which is a hot spot. We need to get ticketing there. Um, <laughs> yep. I don't know if anything can be done if somebody simply takes a number of the, the plate um, and goes to the business as well, um, or additional signage. Um, can we talk to somebody from the, from the department and have them meet with us? Because I expect if this is a, a particular place, it's happening in multiple places. And the general principle is that the sidewalks and pedestrian ways have to remain unblocked. 
and we would like to see, I should think, a general program of the police becoming more aggressive about ticketing. I agree. Joel said that he did talk with Chief Jody Casper, but this is a new one today. Okay. I have requested from to her today. Did an officer go to the convenience store like she said? She was gonna send them over and talk with them about how serious this issue is and a violation. Yep. So I'm waiting for a reply back. So you keep us in, you'll keep us informed on that, but I think we do need to anticipate that we're gonna meet with the police department to talk about being more aggressive in their in their ticketing. Also an area Another of concern area. is also going to be businesses which sometime come from the other side and actually protrude out into the walkways. Um, and it will be one of the issues we identify in the transition plan is to clarify the standard on how much of the public walkway needs to be maintained open on both sides. We know that vehicles, that's illegal, um, but, but also at times when you're doing um, sales or um, uh, restaurants and others use the sidewalk, there has to be a definition of what are the allowable distances and what will be prohibited. There is also another problem. When I was up there last Friday, the same area where Ruth and I brought it to Patty's attention, the Florence Savings Bank, I can't think of the truck. The armored car? Yes, yeah, thank you. Car. Again, parking right on the side, okay, of the Florence Savings Bank, I don't know the name of that street, but they also have the drive-in to the Florence Savings Bank, it's right there on the corner and it's handicapped parking, and I saw the armored truck there again. Pat Shaughnessy, at one point, had sent a letter, correct, Ruth, yeah. to the president of the bank in regards that that is a no-no of them parking there. Yeah. So that needs to be looked at also, because it's starting. Yeah, I think the best that can be done is an aggressive, an aggressive ticketing program mm -hmm. and in some way by identifying any repeat offenders. Right. Yeah, we need ticketing. Yep. We need to call. I agree. It's enforcement. Enforcement. And uh, we can talk with uh, with the chief on, on what, if anything, is available in in terms of strengthening, uh, uh, strengthening enforcement. There was a tradition one program in the disability community. I know, I think what people bothers People aggressively me. put stickers on people's windshields. Yeah, you know, I think what bothers me, though, is being told today, as a counselor, of a meter maid across the street actually saw it and never went over there. Because yeah. she put it to us. Yeah. You're right, you're right. She needed to. And I think at some point we would anticipate um, whatever the training mechanism is within the, the police department that we will want to meet with the police department yep. and, and identify a range of, of, of issues that we would like to ask them to increase their vigilance. Our next item is the mayor's capital plan. Um, <laughs> I went up to um, to council. I find it most informative. I was actually uh, asked by the people at the dispensary um, to go to uh, city council because there might be some discussion of the zoning issues and concerns. Uh, the mayor was presenting his capital plan. It's something like 18 million, eight, no, 13, 15 13, million. 30, I think it's a total of about 70 million. Uh, over five years. He presented it in general terms, but a couple of the points were fascinating. Um, number one, that the Academy of Music is owned by the city. Yes, it is. Um, this is a place where uh, the issue of assistive listening, assistive listening, they do have sound amplification, is relevant. But what the mayor said specifically was that there is some small amount in the projected capital plan to be used to the improvement of the academy in, in, 
including providing access to the backstage. Mm -hmm. We've had very significant improvements to the accessibility of the front of the house, and apparently there's been now been some discussion about improving accessibility to backstage. Yes. Judy and I attended the um, the event, which was about letters being read. I love that. That was, that was a, a terrific event. People, notable kind of in the important figures um, who've had some relationship to the city. Uh, we did meet the uh, executive director of the academy. Um, I think we need to go further with that because I, I found her response to be rather uninteresting. So I think um, we need to pursue again under the terms as we're, we're working on our updated transition plan to one get um, the amount that is projected under the, uh, the mayor's capital budget um, to certainly say terrific, let's take this seriously and look at what the overall needs are of the academy. He also mentioned in his discussion of his capital budget that um, all officers on the force have received some training, one in de-escalation de -escalation of conflict, but also of intervention um, for folks who may have psychiatric disabilities. My ears perked up on that. I think the information, the kind of information we want is um, what's the training, who provides it, that's a real positive. Um, I would think it would be really terrific at some point if some member or members of the commission could actually um, attend some of that training, particularly on de-escalation um, of instances where someone might have a psychiatric disability. It's just tremendously, tremendously important. that training just strictly through the police department, correct? They don't have well, someone come in and do I, the training? I don't know if they go out No, the they, they, go, they generally are provided training through police academies, which are done, are done by the state. Does that, um, in the same way that the ACLU is, is now developing a program um, cooperatively with the district attorney? Yep on the um, actually observing what goes on in courts. I think it would be a very interesting thing to see whether uh, the training provided to police is, is open also for some citizen participation. People in the community express concern about the authorization of equipment for the police department. My sense of it is the most important thing is to promote open and constant communication with our police department. And this would be a dimension of it. We are specifically concerned, obviously, um, with psychiatric disability, which is very, very common among homeless people um, in the city, uh, among residents of public housing. Um, there are, are lots of significant security concerns where, where the police are the first upon whom the citizens of the city must rely, and we want to be sure that the, the training around psychiatric disability is very effective. And maybe we could possibly send a letter to Chief Jody Casper in regards to inviting her and yes. whoever is involved in the training process for all of them in the police department. They have a designated person who goes to these classes and each one of the police officers go. So I'm asking that we send a letter to Jody Casper to invite her if she can possibly come to our next meeting and also somebody with the knowledge of how they proceed with their training, when is the training going to be, and can also an invitation be given to a couple of members of the Commission on Disabilities to go there and observe. I was also going to just say uh, I'm on the board of directors of NAMI, I'm on the board of directors of NAMI of Western Mass, and we have a board meeting tomorrow night, weather permitting, and I know they have some good 
I mean, they're not, they do a lot of trainings, not specifically for police, but they may have some good ideas or resources, and I can certainly bring that up to NAMI Western Mass, because we're, of course, affiliated with NAMI of Massachusetts. We're a local mm -hmm. chapter, and so we're used to uh, trying to educate people that aren't used to dealing with people that have mental illness, whether it's depression, anxiety, bipolar symptoms, whatever, maybe post-traumatic stress, so I'll bring that up uh, with them. And, if they have any, if there's anything useful, I can certainly communicate that. To, yeah. Uh, does Does NAMI have preferred language now? Of folks I knew, preferred psychiatric survivor. Yeah, we're we're looking. In fact, uh, they, there's a movement actually to change NAMI, National Alliance of Mental Illness, away from that acronym because of the illness yeah. part. And there is a push. To, uh, so so yes, they're very aware of of changing the vernacular around so that has less stigma. That's the big thing is Absolutely. the stigma campaign. We've been working with Queen Dickinson on that too. So you're in it, you'd also like to see this meeting with the police yeah, department that would be great. open yeah. up these questions. Yeah. yeah, you know, the physical access stuff is fairly straightforward. It's right. egregious and it's dangerous, but this kind of training and this being prepared for this ongoing, effective community policing. Yeah, the, the statistics are amazing. The percentage of people that the police encounter that have some level <coughs> of mental impairment, mm -hmm. whether it's post-traumatic stress or anxiety, it's, it's a very high number. So if they're not trained and they're just not educated about that, it could really be problematic. So, there so we will invite the... Uh, yeah. We'll invite the department. We're in concurrence on that. Yes, That's definitely. The sense of the meeting. Yes. Um, I'll, I'll, I will write a, a letter of invitation on that. Uh, Judy and I will write a letter of, uh, of invitation. And we will try to get, get it to you to transmit before before all this thing breaks out. Um, it is now, uh, boy, it's, uh, it's the witching hour. It's, uh, um, it's after. Uh, uh, five o'clock. Yes, it's after six o'clock, Chris. Okay. You said it's after six o'clock, excuse me, and I, I apologize to any practitioners of Wicca who find that. Um, but it is after it is after six o'clock. Yes. Well, motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn. I think um, that the problem is is timing, so I think we have to say a little bit. It says new business. Is there any new business around? Okay. We'll be table for the next meeting. For the next meeting. Push all in favor. We, we stand, sit, and roll the turn.